explain? Well, in no, no theater is, is uh, for mo most Americans, the, the theater form itself is, is maybe very foreign and very difficult for an American audience to watch. The way Kurosawa uses it is actually the whole film is not no, it's just one character is, is a no character and that is Lady Macbeth. Everybody else isn't actually playing no, but he has many elements of the music that uh, no theater uses in it. And, um, but, in, but no theater is a, is a form in which there are very few performers for one thing usually. And it's very, um, um, the stage is, you have to imagine a lot more. In other words, if, there's a, if, the, a, if the, sh the story takes place in a kitchen, there is no kitchen. There might be just one object that suggests a kitchen for example. Um, what I'll be doing here is, is um, it isn't going to be that difficult for the audience at all, actually. I mean, the, the figure of Lady Macbeth, who is gothic anyway, um, the stylization of that role, because she's a very stylized character in the film, is, is uh, very appropriate and this isn't going to be difficult for the audience to, um, they may find her a little scary, which she's, she's actually supposed to be in this. Um, but otherwise, I think it'd be very easy to relate to. But no theater is a, is a ritualized theater, the way you might say Indian Native American ceremonies are ritualized. Um, uh, in American life, it's, it's more specific. It's not, uh, because American society is a much more casual society, ritual is, only, you only notice those things in very specific places, like for example, military funerals, you know? Or things like that, but um, this all, the 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 ritual theater form exists more in other cultures than than in American culture. I think you know, and in a funny way, I just saw the Music Man. In a funny way, this is more related to the Music Man, say, than to to naturalism or realism in American theater, because because a musical form is a stylized form, and when we talk about ritualized theater, we're talking about stylization. So when I was watching The Music Man, I went, well, that's, you know, it's what I'm going to do on stage has a very specific stylized uh, quality to it, v much uh, distinctive from realism or naturalism. Well, um, the, as I said, the, uh, because I'm, I'm sort of in, moving in the spirit of, uh, in terms of how the, the, set will, the set looks, is very stripped down. There's not a lot of stuff on stage and that is in the no spirit you know uh, there are surprises in the set which I'm not at liberty to talk about because I want the audience to find out for themselves I mean real surprises um, one thing I can say as a hint is that I actually I I, I, pref I really don't like static sets that just sit there I like a set to be alive and something hap that the set itself is mobile in some way so that's all I'm going to say about that but uh, but I like to work with the same team of designers as, as in an ensemble, you, you, you get to know more deeply what your, source, your resources are by having, working with the same people. And I'm also, because I, uh, in Asian culture, we're very family oriented. So I, I love that, that like feeling of family, you know, of having. So here, the, uh, the, one, the, the two new people I'm working with, and both of them from Oregon Shakespeare, that's Chris uh, Osibo and Todd Barton. Um, and then I'm bringing two designers, my lighting designer, Darren McCroom, who's worked here quite extensively, and Stephanie Marr, who's my, my costume designer, who um, is also chief fabric uh, designer for Eileen Fisher. <laughs> so so uh, these are the people who are coming together. Bar uh, Todd is particularly, I'm particularly excited to work with him because he knows Japanese culture, musical culture, and no theater. So that's a, that's a huge advantage. I won't have to uh, he actually knows a lot more about the music part of it than I do, as, as I found out as we were meeting. Ironically, he's never been to Japan, and I have, you know, multiple times. So uh, we'll, we'll be feeding off each other in that way. And with Chris, you know, it's, it's a, a very, uh, it'll be a new relationship that, that uh, will be very interesting to develop. And with Stephanie, I trust her implicitly, and she's very honest with me about if I come up with some uh, uh, cockamamie idea, she'll just shoot me down right there and then, you know. So I like that kind of response. I, I, I like people to be very 
direct about what they do agree with and what they don't agree with because it really theater is a is a team sport I may be the the art director quote unquote but I really listen to everybody even you know I might even ask actors sometimes this is this color a good color for this do you think you know I mean I ask everybody because through that I come to a decision about what what is appropriate for example right now I'm uh, it's 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 a medieval the, the story takes place in medieval Japan in the 1400s and we're doing period costume but with an edge because the the story of throne of blood is very much the story of the world we live in today which is violent you know uh irrational um dark this and and kurosawa when he did throne of blood was responding to the second world war which had ended uh in uh, 15 years before you know or is it 15 yeah, I think about 15 years before, and about the 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 recurring uh, dark side of human of humankind. And so, for me, that hasn't changed. It's still the theme in in my Throne of Blood, and I want the audience to reflect on um, our relationship to our darkness today because it's not gone away. You know, and that's Kurosawa's point. You know, so the way uh, Throne of Blood begins is in ruins, in ruins, and ends back in, in that place and and he's just saying to all of us why do we have to do, be like this and that's what's moving about uh, the work for me yes and I felt because Throne of Blood is an extremely well-known film um, I wanted some uh, I wanted to um, sort of tip my hat to the fact that it, this came from film and uh, but also because of uh, my work as an interdisciplinary artist, I have always used film, almost always used film, as a kind of uh, partner to my theatrical work. So if I do a show, if I use film or I use projection of any kind, it tends to be, it tends to complement whatever the theatrical thing going on on stage is in one way or another. Or it, it, it allows me to do things that may be difficult to do on stage. For example, uh, the 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 Bomer. Every theater is a spe has specific uh, advantages and limitations. So uh, obviously the Bomer has uh, advantages and limitations that I have to work with and, and uh, or to my advantage. But but those there are things that I can't do on that stage necessarily that um, film will help me in in this situation. And sometimes the uh, the film can also create multiple points of view. For example, if I have a film going on while I have actors working on stage, I might deliberately want you to be totally disoriented, not knowing where to look for, for a time. Or I may choose to, to focus you only on the film or only on the actor, or the film is only complementing the actor, for example. The script's going to be entirely in English, and uh, the cast will be multicultural. Um, there, you know, I've been thinking, of, I thought about that, and, and uh, you know, it is a company I'm working with, and so uh, we may have uh, people coming in from outside. Uh, we don't know yet, because casting is just beginning now. But um, I, I thought about it, and, and at, the, at the same time I thought, I said, this is an American production. Uh, what is America? America is multicultural. And so, for me, that's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it not being an all Asian cast in, in this case. Because at this, and as I said earlier, I am speaking to the, the times we live in, which is we're all in this leaking boat together, you know, and we have to work together. So for me, that's as true of this production in terms of who's in it and who's working on it uh, as, as uh, the, uh, the world we live in. You know, it's, it's just a microcosm of the world we live in. So I felt that that was justifiable to do that, you know. I'm actually working on a project for ACT in San Francisco, which is specifically uh, a play that takes place in Hong Kong just before the Second World War, where that is different. I said, that show, I have to have real, uh, they have to be Asians in that show if they're Asians, and if they're not, okay. But that shows a different thing. This one, the metaphor is really about the world we all live in anyway. So that's how I'm doing it. But one thing that, that I may take a 
big uh, leap in is that um, to the, because the costuming is all medieval armor, medieval, you know, gorgeous silks, kimonos, all that stuff, um, the head, the way people wear their hair is very particular in the Japanese culture at that time. And here I'm toying with the idea of not doing anything with the hair and keeping it contemporary, but keeping the medieval costuming so that one is to to, because the set is not going to be just period. It's going to be um, a, between period and modern. So that's sort of, because one, it, it helps the audience identify more easily. And two, it says, this isn't only about the past or about this remote uh, past culture. This is about now too.